What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel and today's video is going to be tips and tricks for writing more Pythonic Python code. So when I say Pythonic, this maybe is a term that you've heard referred to if you've ever been asking for help on the internet or Reddit, and people will tell you, well, your code works, but it's not completely Pythonic. And what they really mean by that is that there's a style of writing your code that object-oriented programming, and especially Python, where it's maybe not actually improving the functionality of it, but it improves the readability, the simplicity of your code, and it makes it kind of used in the format that the Python programming language was intended to be used. So it's kind of like your code may work, but there could be a much simpler and more efficient way of writing it. And these are a few of the tips for how to make sure you're following those standards. So the first thing is one statement of line per code. Um, and this one is probably the most common across all programming languages. So the next two that we'll look at in this video are maybe a little more Python specific, but really however you program whatever language you write it in, putting more than one statement or uh, function on one line of code is just overly complicating your programming needlessly. So one statement per line of code. And let's look at a few examples because you could, so don't do this, <laughs> but you could print the word one and then on that same line of code, you could print two print two and just separate them by a semicolon so you could do this and it'll run oh, extra punctuation and it'll run let me go ahead and run that and you can see you get one and then you get two on the next line but do this the right way to do this and obviously I'm using simplified examples just so I can show them in a quick video but this becomes more of an issue with more complex programming so you're gonna see if I run this and I'm gonna separate out the good and the bad by just a blank line so it's a little more clear I'm gonna run this we're gonna see the exact same output twice one two one two but if you were debugging or working with this code and you had to go through and you had to look and see and say this wasn't just printing one and printing two. This was a complicated math function. And then this was a complicated math function. Put them both on their own line. Um, and that really cleans up your code. It makes it easier for troubleshooting and debugging. Because a lot of the times when you get error messages in Python, it tells you what line the error is occurring on. And so if you have two complicated things going on in the same line, you now don't have as spe specific of troubleshooting either. So that's uh, one tip and maybe a better example of why you would want to do that. Um, let's say you had a multi-variable condition like you want an alarm that automatically turns on if it's a weekday and if it is uh, if you're not on vacation so let's say you have two variables you have day and it's Sunday and then you have vacation which is just a true or false so you're not on vacation well what you want is this variable alarm to be true if it's a weekday or if you're on vacation so if you're doing all of that on one line of code, you're going to be doing a check if day is equal to Monday or, and I'm going to copy this to speed it up a little bit, but here you'd be checking or Tuesday or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and you're checking to see if not vacation. So you're checking to see if you're not on vacation and if the day is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and here we go. Let's finish it off. Friday, and we don't need that last or. So strictly speaking, this value is going to tell you whether or not to run your alarm. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and run that, and we'll see that when it is Sunday, but you're not on vacation, your alarm should still not be on because it's not a weekday. Well, the Pythonic way to do this, and what we're going to do now, I'm going to copy these three down into the good section, and we're just going to modify them. Don't, 
don't just stick day in here five times for this check. Do an intermediate variable, call it weekday, and make it equal to these conditions in here. Okay, so weekday is a true or false variable now, which is equal to any of these conditions where the day is equal to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. That simplifies this statement to check if it's a weekday and you're not on vacation. This is Pythonic code where you can say, okay, we have a variable that's just telling us what day it is. We need to create conditions stating that when it's a weekday and use an intermediate variable, call it weekday, and create the complicated parameters for it in this. And then you'll see when I run this now, it's going to give us the exact same output as that previous line of code. And your engineer, software, computer science brain may say, well, less lines of code is a good thing. So like in this case, we reduce the number of lines of code and intermediate variables. Actually, less lines of code is not always a good thing if you're complicating your program. That's kind of the essence of Pythonic code. So one statement, one complicated check, one operation per line is tip number one in Python. Tip number two is going to be one return statement per function. So you maybe have seen Python programming, depending on your level of knowledge in Python, where you have a complicated function, and uh, I'm going to bring one in just for this example, where you have, let's say, three variables. Okay, I'm just, this is a three variable function that I called complicated function. And what it does is it takes three values, it checks for equivalency between them. So first we check if A is equal to B and A is equal to C. And then we check to see if just one set is equal to each other. And then um, at the end, we also want an else that would return nothing is equal. So if we just go ahead and run this, like if I were to print complicated function, whoops, complicated function with our variables a, b, and c, then you'll see with values of 10, 12, and 10, we would expect to see a is equal to c. Okay, a equals c, but not b. So that's fine, but what you'll see is inside this function, we have five spots that stuff could be returned to us. And as you create really elaborate functions where you're doing a lot of intermediate work, this is actually pretty straightforward to trace, but the idea remains the same. You don't want multiple exit points from your programming, just like you wouldn't want multiple input points because you don't realize at what point you're gathering the data. A good function has one point of entry and one point of exit. And so what I mean by that let's go ahead and take a look at the good one now so again this is a don't do this let's go down to the do this okay so if I take this same function and I'm gonna start from the same rubric and I'm gonna call this one complicated function two, so I can call them separately I'm gonna create a variable I'm gonna say equal to result and now you'll see you have to initialize it inside your function but this kind of goes back to what we were saying in the previous tip about simplifying your code and creating an additional variable, adding a line of code for the result, and then having to return the result at the end of the program might actually seem like we just added a couple lines of code um, and you need equal signs. Uh, it may seem like we just added two lines of code and another variable, but what we've actually done is we've taken a function that had five exit doors, four exit doors, however many exit doors, um, where it could leave our function at any point, and now we can trace really clearly the input and the output of the whole thing. And so you'll see again, I'm going to print out complicated function 2 with our same variables a, b, and c, and we're going to run it. And you're going to see there we're getting the identical output again because these tips, again, are not ways of modifying code that wasn't working. They're ways of improving and simplifying your code the way Python and object-oriented programming was intended. Um, so the idea behind this is use an intermediate variable if you want to exit the code at several different times. Um, just figure out what it is they have in common and stick that in a variable and then just return that variable at the very end once you're done doing all of your processing. It's easier for tracking, it's better practice, and that's tip number two. So tip number three is going to be be explicit in your code 
And uh, what I don't mean by that is explicit as in swearing, explicit as in clearly define what you're doing. Um, and so the idea behind this is uh, you can at times sim- do what you think is a shortcut, like return inside of a variable, excuse me, inside of a function, return all of the local variables inside of that function in a dictionary because Python has a built-in tool for that. The problem is you don't really have clear eyes on what you're sending back to the user then. So let's do an actual example of this. More coding, less talking. If I have variable A and variable B, and we won't get in trouble because we're redefining them, um, but if I have those two variables and I define my function as something that receives an A and a B, and then inside of this function we are going to do some operation that we'll just say is equal to A plus B. And then we decide to return, uh, because now we want to be clever, we know a little Python, and we want to use a shortcut. Um, And you return this dictionary of all of the locals. And if if you're not familiar with this uh, nomenclature, don't worry about it. Um, But... If you've ever seen this locals, uh, this is a way of getting all of the variables used inside of a dictionary as a, uh, or used inside of a function as a dictionary, um, where you get as the key for each dictionary entry, you get the variable name, and then the value is whatever value they have inside of them. And I'll just, uh, to show that, I'll kind of print what happens if my function, my func, and then we pass in A and B, okay, and let's go ahead and run that, that should do it, that should do it, (laughs) okay, so we're getting this dictionary that says A is equal to 1, B is equal to 2, Z is equal to 3, and that should make sense because uh, we're just adding A and B together, but this is actually not the properly explicit way to do Pythonic code, so um, again, don't do this, and let's show what you could do instead. Um, now, let's say we're going to have all of this. We're going to do my func2, and we're going to do my func2. If you think that what you want to return is a dictionary of all of your values, like that you think that that is what the user wants, the actual proper way to do it is going to be this way you you say the name of the variable and then you punch in what the value should be the name of the variable punch in what the value should be and the name of the variable punch in what the value should be so uh, again let's go ahead and run this Uh, it may seem like I'm repeating myself but that's because Pythonic code really boils down to the same couple of concepts and doing them right every time Uh, You can see here, the output is the exact same as the first function. And so you may say to yourself, like, well, I've got 12 local variables and, uh, you know, I'm clever and I know this built in. Honestly, if you're at the point where you're writing really complicated functions and you're doing really advanced Python, you can make the judgment call of whether or not your program is going to work this way. For a beginner starting out in a lot of your troubleshooting, you're going to find it's tricky to trace a lot of non-explicit code. So if you have things that are implicitly defined using the um, built-in functions of like locals, well, in the scenario where you want to um, just pull one variable out and return that because all you really need from your function is the sum, Uh, If you wrote your program like this, then you're going to have to change it to just return the sum. Whereas if you wrote it like this, then you can pretty quickly see like, oh, okay, I'm just going to grab from index two of my dictionary. Um, So these are not maybe things that you run into constantly. I imagine these tips ranged from, you know, useful in every single line of code to useful in some of the functions you write to kind of a special case. But having all three of these in mind uh, when you're writing code is a really good starting point to start building out more um, extensive Python files and keep in mind a good way of keeping simplicity um, in mind when you're doing it. So again, a lot of these things would be considered ways of improving your code, writing more Pythonic code. But at the end of the day, um, the whole idea with programming is that you create a function that works for you once you're on a team it needs to work for the team so these are ways to create more easily readable and debuggable uh, code
but um, there are a million different ways to do it. Python's an extremely versatile tool, so you may find that there's a scenario where it's not exactly Pythonic, but it's what you have to do to get it working. Um, so these are just general guidelines. Also, if you are aware of some other Python tips or you've heard of other things that you don't completely understand and you'd like to see me discuss in a future video, just let me know about in the comments below. I'll try to get to it uh, as soon as I can. And um, be sure to check out the channel for tons of tips and tutorials on Python and other platforms. And uh, if you did find this or anything else on the channel useful, I really appreciate a like on the video, a subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a ton. And let me know what you'd like to see in future videos in the comments, and maybe you'll see it on the channel pretty soon. So as always, good luck with your code, and thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye.